Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard. I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School, and I just want a quilt. Uh, okay, so today we're talking to the sisters behind the Quilted Twins. Uh, that is Becky Tillman Pierce, Pierce Peterson and Rachel Woodard of Quilted Twins. Um, Becky does the design and quilting um, and the, uh, the the quilts and the designs, and Rachel does the deals and finds. That's their logo. Becky's quilts and designs, Rachel's deals and finds. They are so awesome and funny. They are so funny. They make me laugh so hard. You have to listen to them. They're most ridiculous in the most lovely way. Um, they also have an awesome site um, that has great, great, great deals on um, fabric. I hope you enjoy. Oh, and um, Becky's in Poland. And Rachel is in Florida. We start out with telling, tell me your name. Each of you tell me your name and where you are. Rachel, you go first. Okay, uh, I'm Rachel Woodard, and I am call, talking to you from Dade City, Florida, which is about 30 miles north of Tampa, Florida. Awesome. And I'm Becky Peterson, and I'm talking to you from just about three miles outside of south of Warsaw, Poland. It's a little town called Yuzefu, Poland. It's super cool. And you are, your company is? We are uh, quiltedtwins.com. Quiltedtwins.com, yep. Yes, the slogan is Rachel's Deals and Finds and Becky's Patterns and Designs. That's cool. I love it. All right, so before we, so I've read a bunch about you because you've got a lot of really good stuff on your website, um, but just because um, people may be listening and haven't gone to your website, which if you want to go to the website is quilted, ed, quilted twins with an S, quiltedtwins.com, um, if you want to sort of follow along on what we're going to be talking about. And again, I love your slogan, Becky's Quilts and Designs, Rachel's Deals and Finds. It's so great. That, how did you, first of all, did that take a long time to come up with? Because I think it's quite clever. No, actually, Becky's oldest daughter's name is Abigail or Abby, and she is witty like this. She yeah. just came up with it one day. I Very love quick. it. It's really great. All right, so tell us this, but first tell me this, the question we ask everybody, which is um, your first memories of someone quilting or sewing in your life. I'll go first. Um, this is Becky. And um, because I think I've listened to more of your um, uh, bo- podcast before, so I was kind of ready for this one. Okay. Uh, I I can't say that I remember when the first time I remember my mom sewing because my mom always made our clothes when we were young. But I remember one very vivid image when we were, I don't know, I was probably around nine or ten. And... Um, or maybe even younger than that. And my, my younger sister, she's five years younger than we are. She got a pin stuck in her throat oh. and from my mom's sewing room and my mom stuck oh. her finger down her throat and got the pin out. Oh I remember gosh. that, that straight pin. Oh my gosh. And, yeah, I was, I, re, I remember that, um, you know, so, I mean, sewing was just part of our lives, but I remember when I sewed, we used to hang, we didn't have a TV. So we were, we read a lot. We did crocheting and stuff like that, but, uh, we didn't just spend our time like watching TV. So when mom would sew, I just remember hovering around the sewing machine, <laughs> which might have bothered her, but it didn't seem to. So she let us start sewing by saying, oh, this long seam is boring. Do you want to sew that? And <laughs> so that's how I remember starting sewing. We didn't. She didn't say, oh, today we're going to make a dress or a pair of pants. It was like, oh, this long seam is so boring for me. Would you do it? That's really great. I love it. That's really cool. Um, Rachel, do you have the same memories of as Becky, or different memories of someone? Well, I do a remember a lot of hovering going on. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I do remember we didn't. I didn't really start sewing sewing our own clothes until uh, fourteen, and then we moved to we had moved to Florida. I remember in eight, when I was in eighth grade that uh, one of my friends said, "Oh, your clothes are really cute now," and it was like my mom had started. <laughs> Finding some newer, more modern patterns, and she was making them. And at the age of 14, when we moved to Florida, 
she just turned everything over to us and we started, we made all of our own clothes at that point. I didn't know you were supposed to buy clothes in the store. Really? Sewing was always just a part of our lives. It, it is not something that we had to take classes for yeah. or to go somewhere and learn how to do. So naturally for Becky, I think turning into quilting wasn't nearly as difficult as perhaps for someone who has never sewn at all. Yeah. I, I wanted to tell you this. We really didn't grow up around quilters. My husband's family was. He's from West Virginia uh-huh. and old school Pennsylvania. So that probably lets you know a lot more about that because yeah. we grew up in Washington State. But I remember that right after we got married, one of the first gifts my mom gave me was a book about quilting. And I just looked at it and I said, what's this for? And she said, I expect some kind of return from that. And I'll never forget that. I have no idea where that book went. But my previous thoughts about quilting before that was my mom had evidently started a quilt. And when we moved to Florida, or maybe it was her mom or something, we found a whole bunch of little pieces. And she said, oh, that's a project I'll never never finish. And so I think we probably foolishly threw them away at that point. I had no idea. But that was a long time ago. So did you make good? Did you like make good on the book? <laughs> no, I have, I have no idea. And I thought after Becky started quilting, I should just find that book and hand it on to her. But I asked <laughs> mom about that, and she doesn't even remember doing really? that. Really? So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, mom. You know, it's so funny because moms are so weird. Like you know, like this, and 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 I think back to my mom. I'm like, she was so weird, and now I'm the weird mom, right? Like, so it's like, you know, it's part of our charm. I think. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Oh, um, and what about your kids? Do you, I don't? Do you each have? Do you both have children? Do you do you, do you teach your children to sew? Um, Becky here. Um, my my girl. I think I've made sure that my kids know how to use a sewing machine at least a little, but none of them are very interested mm-hmm. um, because I didn't really start quilting that much until they were mostly grown because yeah. I didn't have time when they were younger. Right. Um, I didn't feel like I had time anyway. Um, that makes sense. But they all, I, and Daniel, my youngest one, actually, my son, youngest child, and my third son, I have five kids, he um, did make a couple quilts when because we were homeschooling it there at the end and so i said i want you to make a quilt and so he made one with the doctor who theme oh, which is cool. cool love it that's and, great um, and yes. he posted it on a facebook group and got like five thousand likes wow that's great you'll have to you'll have to send me a picture of it that's really cool i love it I love uh, becky's it. girls have um probably matured far more in the sewing world after they left home because when they come here to the states they would stay with me uh-huh. and both girls uh, started sewing regularly. Abby was actually the oldest one when she was uh, down here last year was actually making a quilt. Uh, she took one of our D stash uh, quilt kits that we had and she was going to finish it. But I think that life happened and it got put off to the side. Um, but Lydia sews regularly when she's cool. at my house. So, <laughs> so it's they, about your they, house, they, not, they, not Becky's they, house. Is that what you're saying? Well, they don't go. They don't go back to both now. I mean, that's that's just <laughs> I tried to start a rivalry. Um, uh, <laughs> no, my wait, 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 Elizabeth. My yeah. sister acts as surrogate mom to my kids when they yeah. go back to the states. Very nice. So she, she has four of her own, and then my five. So sometimes wow. she's had quite a wild household because they're all craziness. The that's great. Here. Oh, I but wait it. a minute. My I, I can tell you about my daughter. My daughter's twenty uh 27 and yeah. she's here in florida and she's actually quite um quite important in the role of quilt of twins but she actively sews and has made a quilt top that ended up being absolutely huge and so we ended up asking becky if she would quilt it <laughs> the great. problem is the throats on any of the machines we have are about five inches oh my gosh yeah big quilts on that would be impossible just be maddening it's still it's still sitting in a quilt top but (laughs) very good all right so let's talk a little bit about quilted twins tell me about what this business is what is this blog business world sort of explain the components of it to me 
Okay, let me start with mine uh, because it probably really started with me. Okay, Walter. and that's Becky. So that's Becky. people are yes. on audio, right? And um, yeah, um, I started because I. Well, it started really a few years back in about 2015 when I um, was. I had been making charity quilts for several years, and I had a bunch of scraps that I had just collected. In fact, not just a bunch. I had bags and bags, like trash bag size of scraps. Like, how that did I that actually, happen? <laughs> that I hadn't dealt with. It was uh, leftover, you know, backings when you cut off leftover pieces, things right. like that. And I got, and then I would start to uh, trim them up in the two inch strips, two and a half inch strips, one and a half inch strips. And then I found myself never using the two inch strip size. I would use a two and a half inch strip size for bindings. But then I had, I'm, I had two huge trash bags. I'm talking 30 gallon trash bags full of two inch strips. Wow. And so this was the summer of 2015. And I said to myself, Becky, these are just taking up space in your bedroom. You've got to use them because my bedroom was, it was, it was crazy. I said, you have to start using them or, or something because there's no point. So in that summer, I started this series of what I call the two inch strip series. And I started making, um, uh, scrappy quilts out of those two inch pieces and then I would post them on some Facebook groups and people said you should write a book you should write a book or whatever and I was like that's easy to say and difficult to do it's very yeah. easy but if someone took five, five seconds to say you should write a book and that just to take to write a book takes a year yeah. you know or so. so it was like yeah no <laughs> no thanks but no and so um but then we started, I started my group in the fall, my Facebook group in the fall of uh, 2015 after my father died in July. And right in the, I had started that process, uh, that project of uh, using my two inch strips, went to the States for a month, came back. And I'm sure it was part of the grieving process that I just threw myself into the project that my two inch strips project. And I just made a bunch of, you know, more tops and and stuff and then um in that fall um i didn't know where to what to do because i had one of the main groups that i had been posting my stuff on um they <laughs> cut me out i mean they they kicked me out of the group and they said i was promoting myself too much so i wait wait, said, wait, 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 wait. They, they did what <laughs> they kicked me out of the group <laughs> why because they said I was promoting myself because I posted. <laughs> well, heaven forbid that you you post too much in a group. Well, I did. that will not I happen. Come to, just want to quote. We don't believe that. Oh, that's ridiculous. So uh, that is <laughs> well, so gave, ridiculous. She gave away her patterns too, and that was really? a problem in this particular group. And so it, it it worked. It was for the best. But then shortly after Becky got booted, I got booted. You got booted too. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. The outlaws. Are you and like, so it, yeah. Anyway, okay. so I started a new group called Quilted. Well, at the time I called Becky Quilts in the Old Country. Uh -huh. And I told people, because I felt like there was almost no place to go to put my stuff out there because I wanted to show it. Yeah. Um, because other people wanted it. And I wasn't trying to make any money at that point. I just wanted to share how I was using up my strips. And it was like, I didn't know people in Poland, very many people in Poland that actually quilt. And yeah. so the internet was really my outlet and it seemed like a lot of the Facebook groups are, you know, run by a person or right. an, an entity trying right. to make money or something. They get kind of and snappy. Then, it's weird. Like, yeah. cause I posted something. Threatened. Yeah. I've posted something cause I'm trying to gather stories about copyright. So I posted on one of these groups that I've been like chatting with like for a year now about, Hey, I'm trying to find copyright stories. And they came back with like, who do you think you are um, to post on our group? And, uh, Seth, the, one of the, the organizer of the group had to come in and be like, no, no, she's cool. Don't be mean to her. But it was really, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm not selling anything. I'm just asking, like, do you have copyright problems? But they went kind of berserk on me, like just one or two people. It was weird. So I was like, whatever. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. My husband actually encouraged me to start the group because yeah. he, he saw that I was so upset about it, which was crazy. Facebook is supposed to be fun. Yeah. And, uh, so, <laughs> And so then we, I started the, his, uh, Be it called at the time Becky Quilts on the Old Country. And at the same time, when we, when I was back in July from my dad's, the funeral for my dad, that was yeah. the, also the summer 15. Um, this is how we, the whole thing got started. Um, my sister and I 
saw an ad in Craigslist for a lady who was selling her mother's stash Interesting. of fabric. And so the lady wanted several, a lot. I mean, not just like. It was several thousand dollars, but this was no normal stash either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're talking, um, um, yeah, like two van loads of fabric. Are you no, no, no. Like it ended up being like uh, I don't know, three hundred bins of fabric. Three hundred bins quite a bit of, fabric. of fabric. Plastic oh. totes overall. By the time we we ended up buying three different sets, Becky. That was yours. Was just the first. <laughs> there was two. Oh, wow. I went, so, I went with Rachel, but Rachel's my funding. Okay, she knew I wanted the fabric, but yeah. I didn't have the money. <laughs> Yeah, so she had her own other business going on in Florida. She had some cash. And so she actually funded me to buy this. And what we went kind of went together. And then that was kind of the beginning of the quilt of twins, because Rachel had this idea of how to sell the stuff I didn't want, uh-huh. like the, the de stash fabric from that right. lady. And this, she has like sewing machines and <clears throat> quilt tops and I mean, some kits, things, I, some things I didn't really want. And Rachel said, oh, I bet we could sell them. And I think we sat on that idea. Remember, we didn't, we just, we just stored it all for a while. And I kept buying stuff for Becky. This is Rachel again. Yeah. Stuff for Becky. And I kept telling my husband we were shipping it to Poland because I was having so much fun. Uh And he would go, Don't you think she has enough? (laughs) I think it's the cry of most many spouses across the quilting world (laughs) that you think um, she has enough. That would be like on a t shirt. Uh, that would be a good slogan. Um, so yeah. I was folding it while we were watching TV uh-huh. and I would take it and put it in a bedroom so he wouldn't see it after that. And then <laughs> and then he and then Becky finally said to me, I have enough. And I said, Oh no, what am I gonna do? She doesn't want me to ship anymore. <laughs> and you just have kept collecting it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause it was fun for me. Yeah. And how, you know, you there's, there's the it? fabric therapy going. On, right. Know? So tell me how you were collecting so, these works. I mean, were you going, I mean, that was the first initial one, but were you looking for other ones as well then? Oh, definitely. It became my Saturday fun. Okay. So I, I look up Craigslist. I'd go on, I'd have, I have all the, the yard sale, estate sale things mm-hmm. coming in. This is Rachel coming into yeah. my feed. Becky, believe it or not, things different things show up in different people's computers, and I do not know why. So I would have Becky look at Craigslist from Poland, and I would look at it from here, and she would find things that weren't showing up on mine. That's so weird. And so it was really cool because she would be texting me or messaging me, and I'd be in St. Petersburg, and she'd say, oh, did you see there's one in Largo? And I'd say, no, I don't. My phone's not working right. Tell me the directions. And so we would work together, and I'd get there, and it'd be a bust, you know, or something mm-hmm. like that. But it was still fun for me. Yeah. But after a while, every available space in my house was full. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really crazy story. Okay. So then what happened? Well, I had gone to visit Becky in Poland um, initially in 20, this is 2018, 2017, in 2016. Was that the first one, Becky? to organize your help you organize your stash I wanted her to be able to sew and she had so much the kids had finally left Daniel had left so she turned Daniel's bedroom into a fabric room and she was having to spend uh, 30 minutes to an hour every day just organizing her fabrics well I knew how much I'd sent her box after box after box and I hadn't tried to organize it until you know I just didn't try to organize it and she had sent it a whole bunch after to herself as well of this initial stash so I went over there and spent I asked my husband I said Becky's kids are going to be here for the summer. Can I get a ticket and go over there and just organize her fabrics for her? I think that would be so much fun. And he looked at me like I was really weird. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I can run another corner. <laughs> organized fabrics would be fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, the, I can get the ticket free. I have all these free miles. So he goes, sure, go ahead. I can't go. So um, we had too many people at the house that we were trying to keep busy occupied. And so w- with work, cause we have a lot of businesses going on, but I flew out, left Becky's kids and my daughter in charge of my business, the other business. Yeah. I want to chat about that after. one. When we get to and that. that one was so much fun because we were like, I was posting daily on Becky's group, sometimes three and four times a day. 
and she'd be upstairs tr- supposed to be sewing I thought and she'd be on the computer and she'd be and I'd be down here commenting about Becky's fabrics downstairs uh-huh. and taking pictures and posting them on her group and the and it just developed such a camaraderie and so much fun and the people were having a blast enjoying it but we only had like 200 people in the group so it was it was more like a private little club okay <laughs> and what people, I mean, it when they were coming here were you like it, it was it just commenting on the fabrics or you, were you i don't understand so were you selling them at that time or you was no, just no no it was all just hey guys look at look at all these fabrics can you believe all these and i'd have them all folded and put on her bench before i'd go file them away in her room uh-huh. and I call, people, I oh i have one of those oh i like that and i'd becky comment and i go becky go back and sew you know and then people would <laughs> I'm done. I came over here to help you so you could sew, you know, and, and then it would just be comments like that. And it was just a lot of fun. But no, we weren't selling anything until in the fall. Uh, Becky, because I, I kept saying, Becky, you really need to get a website going. We need to get some, a little bit of revenue for all these free patterns you're giving yeah. away. And so in the fall, um, and she was, around in, and Becky, time, you were insistent did, that you still wanted the patterns to be free. That was important to you. That was important because um, as I looked at trying to put them on Etsy, well, at that point, I was, as I said, on my free patterns page, I wanted to help combat the idea of it seems like everybody's out for the money. Yeah. Um, I think that quilting has changed from what the history seems to be. And that was about using up, um, making beautiful things out of scraps or whatever, or not, but it didn't seem to be all about the money. And yet it seems like nowadays it's about big names and what you call divas yeah. and quilting divas and um, lots and lots of money. And it does feel like to me that um, that everybody's out for the money. Even I've seen nine patch patterns for sale. Yeah. And yeah. I reached is like for real. Okay. And so I was trying to just help people because I had been in the situation in the past where we didn't have very much money yeah. and buy, buying a pattern was, would be beyond what I thought I could, but Add to that is being in Poland. I had looked up the idea of having an Etsy shop or uh, Etsy, and I didn't know how to deal with the VAT. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and, and dealing with selling to states, states like people, selling to Australia and selling to, I, I just didn't, I didn't it want It wasn't worth it. Deal. Yeah. So at that point, I didn't feel like my patterns were worth selling. If I can, I don't mean that as a bad thing for me. I just felt like I know myself, if I'm going to buy a pattern, it needs to be something more difficult than what I was doing. At least that's how I looked at it. Yeah. And uh, so I wanted to just, if people wanted the help and they needed help sharing, I was already making these quotes. It wasn't that I came to the computer to design to sell. Yeah. I came to design to make. And then I could, the, sh- the sharing of the pattern was like the overflow. I've already made this for myself because yeah. I needed all these scraps and all this stuff. Um, well, and, a- you know, looking at the, the, um, I really like your, um, your patterns. I'm just totally going to make one of these. Um, I love, um, which one was I think the, uh, major look one is so cool. And, um, I, but, oh. but it really does show you like if people are like people who are want to get into scrap, people listening don't really know where to go and how to deal with scrappy stuff and starting out and like all you have some techniques to make it easier to do all of it. Um, it's really great. And it, it really does feel like, you know, it's very generous and very kind and it's straightforward and it feels like I can do this. Like I, you know, looking as we're talking, I'm like, I could totally do these. Right. Um, and so I can kind of see what you're saying. I mean, you could see it as a book, right? Like sure. People could buy a book, but being able to go on and sort of just get a free pattern and try it is really cool. So. Well, also, if you look at my free patterns, if you look at the very beginning, you see that's really where I started, the one called Light and Dark. I mean, that's the most simple thing you can do is just separate your, separate your scraps into a dark pile and a light pile and then do every other one. Yeah. To me, I should I would be ashamed to, to charge for that pattern. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think that, um, that that information is already out there on the Internet so many places that I – I just wouldn't have even the nerve. I don't even see why it should be. So, but on the other hand, you can see how I grew. If you yeah. look, because these are almost in order of how I've done them. And oh, like cool. light, dark, you look. So you can see how I got more complicated yeah. as I went along and started to get even more creative. And down um, like Norwegian snowflakes, my husband's last name is Peterson. He said that's 
Norwegian. Uh-huh. Um, or perhaps that's our that's our uh, theme. This is Rachel Piped it. We're using yeah. that in all of our marketing too. Interesting. The Norwegian th- snowflake pattern. But I happen to like Argyle sweaters. I mean, not Argyle's the uh, Norwegian the Norwegian design the Nordic design sweaters. Like when we were first married, my husband's from Alaska. We lived there for a year and. They have those kinds of things that they did 30 years ago. Anyway. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Okay, so there's so many on here that I couldn't – I had to actually do a search to find Norwegian snowflakes. That's really cool. So it does look like snowflakes. It's super complicated. It looks super complicated. Um, but it's really not. But it's really not. I love it, but, but it's you, really not. You like art quilts that I don't think that way. I know, Elizabeth, from listening to your other ones that you are you like the artsy ones. And yeah. while I, I admire those, I, I don't think that way. Yeah. And I mean – love to be able to be that kind of an artist and I admire yeah. like landscape ones but especially since my whole goal was to use yeah, these my- are great yeah. yeah these are great now before we go on to more like a thing uh, you know other I have other questions one of the questions is your your quilts are really cool and you're really comfortable being scrappy and I have to say I am really scared of the scrappy quilt because I feel like I don't know where to begin. So, like, made you look, look so awesome, but I don't know how to make it look awesome like that. Like, how do you choose which ones go where so that it looks cool and not just I, weird, you know? I don't – with made you look, because that one is – I used every piece of fabric that I used in there had either white or an off-white background. Got it. And – I tried to stay away from pastels in the background and then had a little design on it, whether it was words. I, I was searching in my, actually that one, I actually added to my scraps because uh, with some of my newer fabrics, because I didn't have enough interesting things. Because if you look up, made you look, if you look in the blog post, there's a lot yeah. more close up pictures in it. And um, there, I went and searched for all my words fabrics, like, you know, ones that just have words on it. Yeah. And, uh, anything that had a, a design that had just um, a lot of background and a little bit of print. That's really cool. Well, it's really, really pretty. I really like it. Um, so you think like in terms of scrappy, in terms of people out there like me that are – so I have um, this pattern I'm supposed to do that's all scrappy and I'm too nervous. <laughs> I just keep putting it aside because <laughs> I'm just like it's terrifying. So, so, But I think that's super helpful, having like cream backgrounds with words. Like if you have like – and I think other ones, you, you said pastels and then batiks. Like, if you have, like, a theme for the scrappy, then at least you've got it, like, under control, right? Is that right. kind of the idea? That is my idea because I prefer controlled scrappy. Um, usually the I, I, the most appealing ones to me are ones where the colors have some sort of plan yeah. to them. Yeah. I also happen to like a lot of the, what we would call a constant background or just to help control it because I'm, while I don't mind a whole quilt that's just all different, you know, a postage stamp quilt with everything's all jammed up next to each other, I prefer where a place for the eye to rest. Yeah. So I, most of my patterns, you'll see there will be some white space or some quiet yeah. space. And do you like white as a background? It seems like I really keep gravitating to it. It just feels clean and like it. the other colors can – it doesn't compete with the other colors. I do tend to use it a lot, white or off-white or yeah. cream, um, because you're right. It does give your eye that resting place, and yeah. so I like it. I like it. I'm trying not to use it all the time because – I'm thinking, you know, we have gray, I have black, I have other colors. I, I don't want to get stuck in a rut. And that's one thing yeah. I'm, I don't want to. I would like to be able to do a lot of different styles um, and not just be, oh, that looks like Becky. Or uh, Not that I'm a big name designer, but yeah. I, I, I do want to force myself out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So I have something as different as like the big X. I don't know if you can see if you're on the free patterns page. Yeah, I am. Uh, I was just looking at um, Suspended Nines, which is just insanely gorgeous. Uh, mm-hmm. Big X, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's cool. So it's got black as the background. But it's quite a bit different because the X is the big thing right across right. the middle. <laughs> right. And all the rest is background. It's, so it's different. I love it. Yeah. So for yeah. those that are listening and not looking, so you can look at Big X. It's on the um, on her free patterns, but it's um, – it's got an X through – I mean, I can't even describe it. It's got a scrappy kind of background. It's got black, and then it's got an X through it. It's like little squares. I don't know. It's, I'm not doing justice to it. It's really cool. Um, <laughs> I haven't – it's really cool. It's really creative. I really – now, the other question I had, and I also, as I said, I really liked the 
the nine what was it the nine. nine yeah um with that one it looked like you were using it wasn't that scrappy in the sense that the they all matched the squares matched is that right like sometimes they match and sometimes they are scrappy uh well the only thing that isn't the this i just used if you clicked on it and you download the pattern real fast it's there's black on the corner but the middle is all scrappy got it so the black on big x yeah Right. No, on suspended nine. Too. Oh, on suspended nine. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm going to look for it. As I said, I have to search it because there's too many. Oh. Uh, hold on. Suspended nines. Yeah. All right. So there's black. And then are each of those. Oh, they're scrappy. I didn't see it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're scrappy. They're totally scrappy. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. You got to look closer. Well, that's really cool. I mean, they're so pretty. And I think, you know, uh, I'm getting ready to. My year ends July, July, June 30th, and so I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing next. But scrappy has got to be – got to sort of embrace the scrappy because it kind of freaks me out. But if you don't I have to. Elizabeth, if you don't like scrappy, don't do scrappy. Well, it I mean, my goal with – so what I've been trying to do, I've done uh, – I just counted last night. I think I've done 30 quilts this year, um, which is totally insane, right? But they're not great. But, but I'm trying to ex- – ex- uh, I know you probably do 1,000 quilts a year. But for me, that you know, it's at nighttime. Uh, when I'm uh, way, way too tired to be quilting. Um, so, uh, but my goal really is just to experience it. So I try not to do more than oh. one thing in it, but I would love to try one of these and sort of see. Uh-huh. Okay. So I the other. Uh, Elizabeth, the key to Becky's, I love the fact that there is so much organization, even yeah. on like circling the nines. I just, yeah. I love that one. I yeah. love the purples and the blues, but it's, it's all scrappy. That's but amazing. But it doesn't look like it, it. doesn't look like, like it right because I was like well I yeah. don't think this is scrappy but that yeah circling the nines it's all right she they're all like jewel tone purples right. and blues mm-hmm. and it's really pretty okay so I, I have like a fa- about a thousand questions how are we doing on time not great so um one of the questions I have is how do you so I see how you like how do you make it look good So the question is, like, in terms of, like, your technique for being precise so that it comes out looking right, do you have any suggestions for people that um, are still struggling? I'm terrible at visuals. So if I didn't have the EQ program, I would have all kinds of failures because I I do everything in EQ. I know I heard. I heard you, I heard Jackie Gehring say yeah. that she, people go to electronics too fast. If I didn't, I'm not visual. And if you didn't, if you just said, do this in this post, I would make a mess when I, when I can, I did terrible. For example, I was a good student in school, but geometry was difficult for me mm-hmm. because it was very spatial and you had to think in a certain way. And when I can see it, like an EQ and throw colors in and move things around, it can, it just opens the whole world of quilting up for me. That's really interesting. I just saw. Why don't um, you guys explain what EQ is for newbies? Yeah, tell them what tell them what EQ is EQ for new people. EQ is a program called Electric Quilt that um, I asked for Christmas for a couple of years, a few years ago, for my husband, and he gave it to me. And so you can put uh, there's already some blocks and different things already on the program that you can use, like standard blocks, like nine patch and. Oh, well, there's hundreds of blocks, really. But you can also draw your own blocks in there. You can uh-huh. take one of the blocks already there and change it. And then you can also plug in all the colors you want. Like you change any block to any color. You can rotate the blocks. You can frame blocks. You can do, you know. And then there's even a, a – have you, do you know the program? Like, yeah, you know, a little bit. Okay. Uh-huh. So you probably interviewed somebody with it, right? I haven't yet, but I need to. You should, um, because I think they're the ones that own the copyright for all these. Programs. No, 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 I mean, I don't think no, but they enable. Yeah, I mean, they us enable to you, right? Them. Now, so, how difficult is it if someone's out there thinking, "Hmm, that sounds really fun"? How hard is it to use the program? I'm probably not the best one to ask because both my sister and I grew up in um, in a world where, uh, through college and all, we were working in a newspaper working on composition in the ad department. So mm-hmm. a little bit with design yeah. as far as ads. So using a computer was not new to me and using, using a design program wasn't totally new. Um, I didn't find it hard at all. Yeah. I've seen people on the internet talk about how awful it is and how hard it is. I thought it was very easy to, to easy to learn to use a, the basic, at least, you know, to for me. Yeah. It was great. All right. I'm surfing as we talk. I just got to clean and simple that one. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. 
So, I mean, I think that what happens is as you get more and more into your patterns, you're just like, oh, I want to make that one. I want to make that one. I want to make that one. So, yeah. It's really- oh, just because I'm, I'm Rachel piping in here. Yeah. We had a lady from Virginia uh-huh. come into the store this past week, and she actually had made Becky's uh, big block and pulled it up on her phone and showed it to me. So, so cool. she th- she was pretty happy with the way it came out. She was very happy. She actually came all the way from Virginia. She went to Orlando to get her sewing machine repaired because she had bought it there on vacation mm-hmm. one year. And then she came on over to the store because we're only about an hour out of Orlando. Yeah. And she was so happy to show us her quilt that she had made with Becky's pattern. And she had to buy backing here so she could Aww, make it. I love it. All right. So let's do this as the second half. So, uh, so you had a ton of stuff. Then what happened? That was where we were this story. So you had bought, you, you had been scourging, scourging all over Florida, finding interesting stuff. You brought it to Becky. You were in, you had 200 people in your group. And then what happened? Well, the group was growing bigger and bigger. And then Rachel decided, uh, I think it was in December one year, she said, we're, we're going to start a website. And they were talking about a name. And so we decided on Quilted Twins. And then she said, I'm going to start selling this de-stash stuff. Well, you I- were the one, Becky, you were the one in November that said, okay, I, I'm ready to start getting some revenue from the patterns. And I had told her, um, Elizabeth, when I was visiting with her, if she wanted to start a website, I would help her uh-huh. because I already get um, substantial ad revenue from my other site. Yeah, we got to so talk I, about I that, that one. We can get yeah. you at least some ad revenue if, you, if you're going to hold the philosophy of not selling your patterns. Right. So... Um, so my son and her daughter happened to be in the house and they heard us talking, even though she was in Poland and I was here, we, we still, you yeah. know, anyway, so they both were, happened to be in the house at the time. And both of them, Andy said, well, I could start the site for you. And then Abby just took over and that was in December of 2016. And we didn't do any selling or anything till January of 2017. On wow, that. We, really? We used December of 2016 to, to get it started, to set up the site, to get Google ads going. So now where does the fabric come? So what you sell online is fabric and books and uh, quilts. So tell me a little bit of where the material, what's, where it's coming from. Because um, you also have a warehouse, so that means you must have a lot of stuff. Well, our, the fabric warehouse is our store. We, uh-huh. we now oh. have a store. We're open one day a week and that just started this year oh, in February cool. and it is going and growing like gangbusters. And we call it a warehouse because we want people to realize that we have the fabric set up as a warehouse would, um, not like most quilt stores where it's just down low and out for everybody to see it. It's, it's for us to fill our online orders. Uh-huh. Our philosophy was a lot like Becky's in that I was frustrated. This is Rachel. I was frustrated when I'd go into stores and I'd see the ridiculous prices of fabric. Yeah. And I thought there's no reason that I know of for fabric to be this high. Let me see what we can do to offer fabric, quality fabric for a whole lot less money. So we started looking at that. Well, we'll start selling, start by selling this D stash, which, was Cal, fine what whatever becky didn't means. want what is d stash you keep using the term d stash in case people don't understand oh okay that that's somebody's stash that they're getting rid of so they're d stashing it d stashing <laughs> got it so it's it's not a repeatable sale in other words i you know like somebody might have six yards and right. they might be able to cut it up three times or six times into one yard pieces if they ordered like that but yeah for the most part that's a lot of work yeah. selling something like that so I had to start looking for suppliers, which will remain nameless for this interview, okay. <laughs> um, so that I could have repeat sales because by the time you take pictures and put things on the website right. and I spent a lot of hours looking for these suppliers and a lot been, you know, done a lot of emailing and I guess you would say knocking on doors and I'm not And the really suppliers good. are for the, the bundles and the yardage that you have is that what you're talking about the, the yardage we make our own bundles you make your own bundles oh you make your own yes. bundles interesting and so you're trying to find fabric that is reasonably priced or discounted or other sort of like right. they're um that then you can price you can get at a more reasonable price and then sell it and still make a profit is that right correct we have found several suppliers of 
um, uh, of fabric from say a year ago That's so cool. instead of fabrics from two weeks ago. I and totally it, love this. This is so yeah, cool. Yeah, well, the thing is, our philosophy is that our idea after I see Becky's quilts is you're going to cut it up into little bitty pieces anyway. Right. So you really aren't going to see that it's a 2016 pattern and they won't even yeah. know. No, gonna nobody's going to know, it. right? It's like, that's the <laughs> dumbest ever, right? Because quilts are not, I mean, in fact, I've got a new philosophy, which is sometimes... Like some of the, like I just finished um, a Tula Pink, like I tried to experience this Tula Pink thing and it's like, well, I feel like she's making it, right? Like it's so dominant that Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I really like her stuff, don't get me wrong, but I'm making a Tula Pink thing, right? And that is really different than say the other stuff I do. So when the designer gets so strong, um, it becomes kind of a different thing. And I think then it may feel like a little passe, whereas... The other fabric's not going to have that, right? I don't know. Oh, well, yeah. It, it, you wouldn't even want to cut up something that was that. Um, that was actually. A, a, that much a, for something that's that distinctive. Then yeah. if, once you cut it up, it just becomes like every other fabric. Yeah, a that's, I felt that way. I had a, a lot of anxiety over cutting that fabric. It was true. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, this so is so cool. And your prices well, are awesome. So people listening, yes. just want to say, so people listening, um, it mm-hmm. is quiltedtwins.com and you've got a ton of fabric and mm-hmm. it's so, so instead of like, I'm going to just click on any of them. Um, so it says like, first you've got them in all these different colors. So like, it's like floral school and it's got like eight, uh, seven different versions of it. Um, and then it, instead of 1099, it's 399, which is incredible, right? right? Incredible it's beautiful prices. fabric too. Beautiful fabric. In beautiful fabric. Yeah. Really cool. Um, and then you can get it in yards, right? Is it yards? Yes. It, you have to buy even yards for that yeah. price. We, we're not cutting it up into small That's pieces. too much. Right. And then, and you get flat rate shipping $5 on all orders. So yes. that's really cool. And our biggest hit is really our backing fabric. And right now we have a, a shipment of about 200 different kinds <laughs> of backing Are so you serious? um by the end of next week we should have oh over 200 gosh. backing fabrics up on under backing and the backing so if you fabric, can't find so, what you like it probably doesn't exist no and the backing is that so for people that don't know what backing fabric is tell them what that is it's 108 inch approximately it's between 104 108 they advertise as 108 inch uh one solid sheet of fabric that people put on the backs of up to a queen size quilt without a seam. That's so cool. And we, we sell it, um, the price, what we have left right now is seven ninety five, but it's going up to eight forty nine with this new shipment as soon as it gets here, just because it's still a steal. It's going to be sixteen ninety nine and up at most stores. That's right. That's right. It's an insanely, ex- it's expensive. And then usually yeah. if it's 108 wide, how much, well, I guess it just depends on the quilt on how much you you are buying. But Becky, um, most of your quilts, what it, what it, most of the most queen size? How big are they? Most of well, them, I would I would just buy what three yards, and I would be fine. That's amazing. Or, They're I'll really so, and also you know with quilt shops, they usually have some of it, but they don't have the amount that you guys have. You guys have you have a lot. Like, how are yes. you finding all of this? I know it's, <laughs> that's your secret, right? That's so trade se- secret. So let's just like do a little education here. That's like, uh, cause I'm a law professor. I have to put that hat on. Oh, I have to go to graduation. I forgot. Crap. Um, so also, um, so, uh, yeah, so trade secrets. So what, um, Rachel keeps saying, keeps not telling us is where <laughs> she's getting the fabric, how they price it, all of that stuff. And that's her trade secret. And that's her right to do that, right? So her company is going to like make sure that people don't go off and tell them, tell about that, right? So that's what the trade secret, and almost every company has some sort of trade secret. And the key to that property is you got to keep a secret. You don't have to keep it super secret. Like the courts say, like, you don't have to be so secret. It's crazy secret. But you got to, ha- it's, it's, it's got to be secret and it's got to have some sort of commercial value. And for Rachel, that commercial value is how they're getting these, these things. How they make this business happen is because they figured it out, how to find really cool things, how to price it right so people um, purchase them. 
right? Am I right? This is. Oh, this- you are. You are a hundred percent right. And people ask, and I just say a lot of hard work. A and lot I'm, of hard work. I, Great. Yeah. I'm not willing to give it away for free. Okay. okay. No, you can't. <laughs> oh gosh. I know I have, we have this other business. You have other business I want to talk to you about before we get off, but we have this other business where we determine the copyright status of works for people. Um, and they pay us a lot of money to do that. Right. A lot of money. And so they'll be like, well, how long will it take you to do that? I'm like, I don't know, like 30 seconds. And it's like, well, but we pay you a lot. I'm like, yeah, but it took us 10 years to get to like an answer that's like 30 second answer. Um, so it, it's like like that, that value of how you know how to do it is super valuable. Um, and right. that's why you got to keep it secret. And that's why it's a trade secret. Exactly. I, I'm not trying to, to be mean, but it's no, just. That's your it's, business. It's of, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just you're being, you have a good business sense. And like, that's, that's your business. So. Um, no, it's, I mean, it would be mean to tell people because then you'd, you know, you'd be in competition with yourself and that's stupid. So, um, (laughs) okay. So, uh, and the brands, the brands that you have are all the brands, right? You have a lot of brands. We do. Right. This is, it's because we carry a lot of, we get like from these wholesaler clearance people, they'll get Michael Miller, Robert Kaufman. Timeless oh Treasures, gosh. Paintbrush Studio, yeah. all of them. And I just open the boxes and say, oh, this is so cool. This, right. Look what I got. And then we will turn oh that Christmas present, so to speak, yeah. of of miscellaneous people's stuff and organize it, put it on the site and sell it. And people, that, that's why they love coming in here. They yeah. never know what they're going to find. That is really cool. It's like, um, uh, like, uh, all of those places like TJ Maxx or all those places yes. where you're just like, yes, you just only it's for because... fabric lovers. And it's for fabric lovers. So where they are you? Come in and nobody leaves angry. Nobody. We have, to to- we have to totally come on a field trip. Where are you located? <laughs> just if you come to Disney World, everybody goes to Disney World. Come really? see us. We're about an hour away. Oh, you know what? I, maybe we have to say we have to come to you so we can go to Disney World. It'll be like, you know. <laughs> Right, like we have to go. This is a field trip, and we have to go to Disney World too. That's right. Uh, That's right. Well, I think we should do this. I really want to see your place. This is so cool. I am totally like um, I'm a little scared. Um, you know, it's the first sale that always is the scariest because you haven't put your credit card in. But then, oh my gosh, I think I so want to. I mean, because I don't like. I'm not really, I buy a lot of fabric, but I don't like spending a lot of money on fabric because I, I don't. Well, then you should come see us. We actually had yeah. one husband send his wife back inside and said she didn't spend enough money. Really? That's very really. sweet. That's really sweet. We I cheered, We cheered for him when she came back. <laughs> the best husband ever. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is like incredible. So mm-hmm. if we go to the warehouse, what is the warehouse experience like as opposed to the online experience? Oh, well, you get to, we, we, because we're only open one afternoon, we have six or seven of us in here that are working Yeah, and, um, it's, it's my more like a cheering section. Not really, but yeah. we're having fun. We're, yeah. we're all having fun and there's guys. And so any single females, you know, you're welcome to come. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> have some guys, because they can reach up the high shelves because right. we won't let our customers climb up on the ladders and stuff. Oh my gosh. So we have one, we have, um, we have law students on our project and one is Ricardo who, and all of the quilting ladies love Ricardo because he does, he's like tall and they're like, they love, he's very charming uh-huh. and very nice, but they're always like, oh, Ricardo, can you help us put this up? And <laughs> it's very funny. They don't remember, <laughs> like we'll go on field trips and they don't remember my name or any of the other people, but they know Ricardo. <laughs> they love Ricardo. Ricardo is like, oh my gosh. He's like, you know, if you're, you know, over like in your 50s and 60s, every 70s, everybody loves Ricardo. It was very funny. Yeah, that's hilarious. I know. So, yes, I found like a thousand things I want to buy at your shop. Well, good. Um, so uh, I know we're, we've been running late. Uh, we might have to do a part two. Um, so... Let me see. Let me look back at my list. So tell me about um, your other business. Tell me about your um, coupon clippers business. Well, I'll just keep it really quickly. Quick. Uh Um, This is how come I know how to run an online business. We've been really successful with that. I started that one in 1996. So you can tell I've been going at that for 22 years. Wow. So we we started with the internet and we were actually doing it on by paper, trading coupons and, and having a coupon uh, clipping service 
when everything was just printed and then everything went to email and bulletin boards. And then when the internet came on, I was first one on the internet. So it, it's, it's grown with the internet, but we do know how to run an online business and we don't, you don't get there by scamming people or by cheating people yeah. or by being dishonest, which is why, you know, I, we, our philosophy here at Quilted Twins is just, we want you to be happy. We want the customers to be happy. Yeah. And if for some reason they aren't happy, we'll make it right because yeah. I'm not here to scam people. We work for the long haul. I didn't get where I got with the coupon clippers by scamming people. Yeah. So and tell so, us how you know people. Yeah, we found that, that there are some people that are never happy. Yeah. But for the most part, we just want to make we just want to treat people like we want to be treated. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how coupon clippers works. Well, basically, what we do is we buy a whole ton of of um, newspapers with the coupons in them and then Uh we pull the coupons out and then we I hire out people to clip um, separate out the coupons and they bring them back to me and I have um, like professional paper cutters like you would find in a bookstore Uh a print shop not a bookstore a print shop and uh, we cut the coupons and then we offer them for a handling fee on the internet for between five cents and 15 cents and then people come along and order them and we have a minimum order and it's very labor intensive and I don't recommend anybody doing it. Okay. So give me an example. So I'm at your website now. Okay. So I'm at frozen food. So when do they, I'm so confused. So, so give me an example. Cause I need like a concrete example of what, how this works. Okay. So, um, well, our biggest sellers right now, our, our biggest coupons that we handle also we're not supposed to sell coupons we handle them is is are any detergent coupons okay so right now there's a tied simply coupon it's a dollar and right now walgreens has coupons uh tied simply on sale for i don't know i saw i think i saw a dollar 99 and then with the dollar coupon they'll order the dollar coupon and pay us 15 cents Uh and we'll ship it to them and then they'll hurry to their walgreens either get the product or a rain check one or the other. Uh-huh. And then, and then they will save, you know, they'll still save uh, 85 cents because they paid us 15 cents. But people say, well, how do I save money if I'm ordering coupons? And I say, well, you, if you order $3 worth of coupons, you're going to save $30 because that's pretty much the standard of the way we price things. Right. So it's a win-win situation. If you use the coupons, if you don't use them, then of course, then you're going to throw your money in the trash can. But we're not here to help people lose money. We're here to help them save it. And we've taken that philosophy over to the Quilted Twins. And we want people to, everybody to be able to quilt. And everybody really should be able to afford this. Super interesting. And so that's, that's what we've done. And, and the, the nice thing about the fabric business is it doesn't expire. And I found that my um, fabric people are just lovely. Aren't they lovely? They're lovely, right? They They're are. Lovely, right? The whole They're- the whole thing is lovely. I don't really understand. It is. That. It is. They're lovely yeah. and patient right. and giving and caring. Okay. It's here's my philosophy. Fun. So I work in the law, but law world, right? Law school, kind of brutal, super brutal, like brutal on every level. Like my life is very brutal on that why You know, we're training lawyers, right? So how could that not be a bit brutal? Right. Um, but uh, – I was trying to get everything organized and um, we were trying to do something. I have to get approval to do for funds to be used, my funds from the university to be used. And we just couldn't get it done. And I told the, I told the quilt and I had promised them we were going to go on this adventure and then we couldn't. And they were like, that's okay. She's like, you know what? We just need to get together and help you and figure out how to make it better for you. And I was like, you're not mad that we can't go. They're like, no, like it's all fine. You just have too much going on and let's help you figure out how to do it. I was just like, okay. Here's the thing. It seems like the quilting ladies, I know there's men, there's totally men, and I know there's young ones. I totally get that. But mostly women um, Mm -hmm. who have spent their lives, like, having to juggle and deal with Mm -hmm. a bunch of crap. And, like, quilting is their own space of, Mm -hmm. like, their space. And they they are just nice to each other. Like, you know what I mean? It's like no one's bugging them. No one's making them do stuff. You know, it isn't work. It's like this, this sort of sacred, special space. And everyone just chooses to be kind in that space. That's like kind of, you know, they're like, I never know what people's occupations are, but they're all, they don't care. That's not what's a, what it's about. You know, it's about like the love of the fabric and just your own time to do stuff. Do you think, I mean, that's my newest philosophy having done this for a year. 
is that? Oh, it's, it's, it's so true. And I, I can't wait till Becky can come back over here to the States and actually be in the store to experience the camaraderie. These uh, people don't even know each other. Right. And they're helping each right. other pick out fabrics. Right. Without it's so cool. It is such a person. like, and maybe it's because it also has that, that history of being, co- you know, community and camaraderie and, you know, all of that, that even in a kind of super hyper capitalist space, it still has a sort of feeling of love and community and all that. So it kind of transcends what our world is in some way, um, in this kind of amazing way. Um, yeah. yeah. And politics too, you know, it's really quite remarkable. So, um, it's really if you amazing. Can keep politics off of like, um, websites, so Facebook groups and all, because that just divides. I mean, cool thing, Facebook groups, because it just it, it just, divides it, people. Yeah, yeah. And, and it doesn't have anything to do with cool thing. No, and, and it's so funny because I'm very. Um, now I'm just chatting about myself, but um, I'm very like Willie out there with my politics. I I, I made like 25 pink hats when Hillary. <laughs> I just kept crocheting. I didn't even know how to crochet, but I'm just like, I'm going to crochet every night because I'm really sad. Um, So I made a lot of pink hats, um, a lot. Um, But I also spent like um, four days. There's an assistant. We laugh about this. Um, There's an assistant at school that went with me to Houston. Um, And so we spent like four days together. And she's like a super uh, Trump person, like super Mm -hmm. Trump. Like, like, wait. So I was like, and we just like, we were fine. Like, we were totally fine. Like, we also probably just were like, wow, like, you're not so bad. I'm like, you're not so bad either. I'm like, and and it was like, we found common ground with quilting. And it was fun. And it was great. And it was like, it was like, you know, it was, I think it was just a really great trip. But I'm really cool with, I mean, you know, I just, I'm not really shy about what who I am but but I just felt like um quilting can do that as long as people like understand that that's the game that's the physics of it that's the rules like just be good be nice um like that's the rule like don't be mean like get out of here if you're mean so um that's kind of yeah so it's been a great year of this project I mean it will be more but this first year has been amazing um and so makes Elizabeth, it, how, long, how long have you been quilting? I, I know you my first quilt I made when I was thirteen. I remember going with my mom to the quilt shop. You're the first one to ask. Um, the uh, I remember going to the quilt shop and picking out the colors. There was a quilt shop, and I remember her thinking it was really expensive, like it was like mm-hmm. a big deal to go. And it must have been like uh, it must have been around seventy eight or seven nineteen seventy eight or nineteen seventy nine, um, and uh, we made the quilt in like two days. Like I just loved it, right? We just made it and we tied it and we painted my room to match the quilt. It was like a whole thing. Um, wow. And then I didn't quilt again until I was in grad school because mm-hmm. I lived next to a quilt shop. So um, we would walk every night when it was closed to Walgreens and there was a quilt shop. And so we, I just started going over in the daytime and then I took classes and I quilted a lot through law school and then stopped again. And then when my kid was five and she could quilt, we started quilting together. So now she's 15, almost 15. So I don't know, on and off for a long time. But it's always been – it's funny. Someone had talked about it a a while back, um, how quilting shifts in your life, that like sometimes it's it's about different things in different parts of your life. And I think – but it's kind of always there. So, yeah, it's always been there for me. Well, Elizabeth, I'm impressed you had time to quilt while you were in law school. That's that you didn't even go any farther than that. You're a very organized person. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a hard time not doing things. You know that I don't know if it's a. People always think that's like a a um, good quality. My husband thinks it's a bad quality. He's like, can't you just sit? Um, <laughs> no, not really. My engines rev too high. You know. <laughs> Your husband should talk to my husband. Yeah. I really do want the t- the the T-shirt of what is it? She has enough already. Yes, we yes. need that T-shirt. We need. She has enough already. Right. Sold to the men. Sold, Sold to, to men. the men. Yes, it's the true. Men. T-shirts yes. for men. That's right. And the, she has enough already. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. This would yes. be totally a great shirt. The other other shirts about like you know the all these shirts about like my husband doesn't know how much I've like spent at the shop or all those things. It's got to be the other shot. I totally know how much she spent at this shop. <laughs> now it comes on their phone, right? I mean, I might, you know, my husband's great and, you know, I may, I'm, it's not an issue in our house, but, um, but the, it's really awful, awful if you're 
your uh, accounts are connected because the moment you spend something, it comes to the phone. So there's no hiding your uh, your stash anymore or how much you're spending. If they just shop at quiltedtwins.com, they wouldn't even have to hide it because okay. it's so inexpensive. It yeah, do you, more do you than put, half. Right. Do you put like, this is how much it would have cost if you had gone somewhere else? <laughs> how much you saved. <laughs> yeah. That's always because like I remember as a kid, we would go to like um, – Robinson May or some shop with all these coupons and coupons, right? And right. like we get home to my dad. I mean, we were little, um, and we would be like, "Dad, like we saved three hundred dollars." <laughs> like it was like not how much we spend, but this should have cost. Right? That's what Joanne's like, does on the bottom of their little receipts. They say, how "Right, much it's so great." Well, you guys are so cool. So if people are in the Florida area near – so I think it should be mandatory that every time you go, your family goes to um, Disney World that, like, they go off for the day and you go off to your place, right? So yes. um, what day is your – if you're only open one day a week, what day do you, are you open? We're open on Thursday afternoon, but we would open any other time if they would if they would um, let us there, know. Because you're there anyway. Is that what you're saying? Because you're doing other stuff there? Well – we don't, none of us live very far away. Oh, it got it. Oh, uh, we so have to do, okay, we were trying to figure out what to do this summer. We so have to come to this <laughs> warehouse. This would be so cool. Yeah. Yes. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for your time. I don't want to end this, this, this is so, you guys are both so much fun. This is so great. Um, wait, thank one more thing we, I do want to ask about is your upcycled quilts. Can, should we oh. talk, talk about that quickly? And I love okay. the blue upcycled project. They're so amazing. Um, they're all great, but just they're stunning. So tell me just a little bit about the upcycled quilts, um, even though we're over time. Um, okay, to make it short, here in Poland, I had uh, started my upcycled series in general several years ago when a friend of mine here uh, named Monika told me, Becky, you can make pretty quilts because you have all that beautiful fabric from the States. And at first I started to object and thinking, oh, it's not true. And then I stopped because I thought, well, maybe it's true. Maybe I can make beautiful quilts because I am blessed to have things I can bring back in my suitcase at that point. And so at that time, this was in 2014 or 13, I decided to make at least five quilts a year made out of only things I could buy in Poland from secondhand shops. And because I thought I got to put myself on the same equal playing field as my friends who don't have access to that beautiful fabric. Because in Poland, at least at that time, there weren't very many quilt short stores online or, or in, in real life. Uh, and, and this lady couldn't afford uh, $20 a yard fabric because it's more expensive here. Uh-huh. And um, because this is Europe and that tax and everything's imported like multiple times. So each time everything gets added prices too. So that's when I started making five quilts a year from upcycled things. So around us happens to be a lot of these shops that have fabric or clothing items from England, France, Sweden, Norway. <laughs> and and there seem to be a very popular place to go shopping. But what happens is the stores get their stuff in and they cycle them through. And at the end of, uh, they start out more expensive. And then towards the end, when they, they picked over, they go cheaper and cheaper, cheaper until then they, then they move them all out of the store. And then they start with a new cycle, new grouping. So I found out when some of the shops around here had things for one swatty, that's like 25 cents or 30 cents a piece. And so I, uh, went, cause I thought I need, I need, if I'm going to make five quilts a year, I need to have a supply of stuff to choose uh-huh. from. So I went and I kind of overdid it like everything else. <laughs> a me, a theme. <laughs> and I we go to these stores that have these things. Overdo it? We don't ever overdo it. <laughs> I totally want to be one of your sisters. I totally love you guys. It is Listen. so great. Elizabeth, you said something about on the our quilting army because I we yeah. are part of it. You yeah, might get sick of it. your whole quilting army is probably half of us are like this. Okay, that is so, so. awesome. I love it so much. <laughs> so I, I ended up with way too many blue. I would just go buy everything that was 100% cotton, whether it was a shirt or, or lightweight pants yeah. or pajamas or whatever. And I didn't really care what color, or what it looked like. I would just buy it, it and so I'd come back with bags and stuff like 40 40 items. And this week and a different store had a different because there were like five or six stores around here that were doing that regularly yeah. and I got way behind well then I I decided to tear them all apart I took them apart and I just separate Rachel helped me separate them yeah. by color 
And that was when uh, this past year, when I was cleaning up that room, it was my daughter's bedroom <clears throat> for her. She was going to get to come up for Christmas. <laughs> and I said uh, at this. And so I started making upcycle quilts in general um, every year and um, five. I tried to do five. And so but this the upcycle blues series started in November when I looked in my daughter's room and I was trying to make it back neat again so she could have a place to sleep <laughs> and upcycle fabrics had kind of taken over there and so I I pulled all the blues out and I said this is crazy I have six boxes of blue six not just two which is what all the other colors were and so, and so so I said, this is it this is this has got to go and so right. I'm not throwing them I paid good money for these so I'm going to start using them and that's how the upcycle blue series started and um, so I did, my re only requirement is that it all has to be upcycled. So I can add, you see all those whites or mm -hmm. other colors, but they're all still upcycled fabrics. They're all duvet covers or sheets or something. And my, once again, my point was to show that you can make things without spending the $15 or in Poland, it could be 20 some dollars a yard. That's or ridiculous. Meter. Yeah. And, and people can't afford it. I know. I totally, that, I don't know how people do it, truthfully. I really don't. Because I, I, I just, I don't know. It just, it seems like a lot of money. But, um, and I actually you know. had a goal of wanting to teach uh, work because we have a, this organization, a charity here in Poland. Mm -hmm. And I had wanted to teach quilting, but I knew I couldn't tell these people, you have to go spend $20 a, a yard for fabric. Yeah. They are meter, whatever it was. And, and because they would just say, I can't do it. And that would be the end of the conversation. And they right. wouldn't want to try. Yeah. So if so, you, if you wanted to do upcycling, how, what's your sort of tips on like trying that? Like, would you, do you look for something in particular or sort of what would your, what would your first stop steps be here in the, in the States where we don't have state, that really cool I would thing? look for. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do have it, Elizabeth. We do. <laughs> Rachel. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> Tell us. What? I'm not even worried about time anymore. I'm just like not even worried about it at this what point. Did you say? I just like she said we do have a place like that. So tell us more about that. Oh, in the states? Yeah. Rachel yes. Barnes. Tell her what we have. Fill a bag for a dollar thrift stores around here in T in Dade City. Yeah. Yeah. And you can go and stuff like ten shirts. Oh, Sixteen. Sixteen. It's crazy. For... Really. Yes, sixteen shirts, men's shirts in a in a Walmart type plastic bag. If you roll them, okay, you roll them. You take them. You guys so roll. know what you're doing. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so insane. All right, tell us. That's you're so insane. All right, so you have to roll them. You gotta like. Well, that's to get the most bang for your buck. But then when you get them home, you look at them and you say, "Why did I do this to myself?" Right. So. I stopped. I only did that once. And I thought, I, I this isn't even where I want to go. Okay. Yeah. This is, you know. And it looks I, like I you can even, oh, yeah. Like, they're all over the place. I'm looking online. I don't know if there's one around here. But uh, let's see. Well, they don't all have fill a bag for a dollar. Right. Or even $2 or $5. Right. But ours do. Yeah. But then, of course, I'm not really pushing that because then nobody would be in here buying fabrics from quiltedtwins.com. Yeah, but it's a different kind of fabric, right? Like, that's a whole different thing. Like, if you're going to do, I mean, at least here, I mean, I imagine, right? It's really different. I mean, I it imagine. It is different. And I will say that there are people who are doing the upcycling thing as an ecological thing, as a belief thing. For me, yeah. it was to prove that I could make something pretty without spending a lot of money when a person doesn't have access. We are blessed right. in the States to have access to so fabric. Much. Yeah. And, and, and sites like, and sites like yours. I mean, like there are right. ways to get reasonably priced fabric. Right. Yeah. And so I wanted to, to, I mean, while it is ecological, that is a side benefit, I guess, to not worry about the, the the dumpsters and the the overflowing landfills i it's not really the reason that i do it and mm -hmm. um mine was to show my friends here in poland that they too could make them if they can just begin to think a little bit broader and a little bit bigger and yeah. not just say i but i already found out when i was going to those shops i know other ladies were buying those things for the fabric too yeah they might not have been making quilts, but they were making other things, maybe table covers or, or other things. Because I could tell those ladies weren't looking at those things. Right, they uh, weren't like, as, looking at the sizing. <laughs> sure, they were looking at the fabric. Right. 
<laughs> you kind of, you so know. You're like, ah, yeah, I know why you're here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I totally adore you. I know you're most, most of them awesome. Most of them, most of them were not quilting with them, but they might have been making little right. napkins or decorator things for the houses or, or repurposing them into a smaller clothing item for a child or or something like that. And uh, so my point was, if you're in the States and you want to upcycle, yeah. then you just the first thing you need to do is find a source. Because if you're going to, don't go to Goodwill and pay $5 a shirt. Because yeah. it's easier right. just to go to Quilt the Twins and pay $5 for a yard. Yeah. Because you actually bought yourself a lot of work. When you go and buy yourself shirts, you have to then take it apart. Right. And, uh, you know, wash it. Or if it's, if it's not clean to start with. And, right. and I right. wash everything uh, when I finish my quilts before anything, ha- I, and if, if the fabric stinks or something, so then I wash it again, yeah. but, um, like the, but then I would just sort everything you get. Like if you bought 30 shirts or 30 items, whether for, I like pajamas cause, and scrubs too, they provide a lot of interesting fabrics. And, um, so not just shirts cause then everything looks like a shirt. And yeah. when I started mine, I didn't want everything to look like it was shirts. Right. And so, for example, starring monkey wrenches, that's the first one on her upcycled yeah. blue project. I mean, there's a lot of duvet covers, but there's also curtains there. There's pajamas. Very cool. And you don't see that. You just yeah. see blue. You just see blue. Yeah, you just see blue. You do. They're really pretty. And white. Yeah, they're really great. And uh, with that one, I did not realize all the different mm-hmm. shades of white in there because inside the house, I couldn't see them. I took it outside to take pictures. And I brought in, it's like, I had no idea there were that many because I made it mostly in the winter where it's uh-huh. kind of dark and dull here in Poland, uh-huh. not real sunny. And so I was shocked, actually, at the it's color really cool. variations. Of I love it. The <laughs> variations are really pretty. Um, very cool. Now, um, I know we're way out over. Cycle, of cycle, then you can just use your fabrics just like fabric. You don't have to. Uh, think anything different about it yeah that's just what a, I was gonna ask once you take the seams out do you do you take the seams out or do you like if you like a, a dress shirt what do you do with it I tear it apart usually or cut it apart at yeah. the seams but I don't take the seams out with a seam ripper that would take way too long yeah because you don't I need just, that uh, cut the collar off cut the cuffs off and I was saving I will admit there are some who save the collars and cuffs but I had this once again a 30 gallon two 30 gallon trash bags of collars and cuffs and not I, really I took, I took it outside one day to work on it and my hands got so tired of ripping apart and then starting to rip the things off for this one little strip uh, yeah. for the collar. <laughs> I looked at myself after an hour and how much had I done I said Becky this is crazy that is crazy so what did you do did you your um... my my husband wanted to use them for kindling because we have a fire so he's I said okay Mike I give in this stuff is for the fireplace and did it work oh yeah yeah. that's interesting you make me think of the um when you buy the whole cow (laughs) yes yes <laughs> totally that. Oh my goodness. Well, my husband's family actually does do that because they they raise beef up in Alaska. Well, see, there Alaska. you go. Right? Like, oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, they'd be very proud of all of it. Right? Yeah. Nothing wasted. Interesting. Well, I totally, um, this is so great. All right. So, um, yeah. So, next step. So, I want to ask you um, uh, two more questions, but I want to ask you off camera. So, um, we're going to end this. Um, you guys, any other worries or any intellectual property issues that you have? Or have you trademarked your quilt- quilted twins? Have you put a federal trademark in or do you not care or any of those things? Well, you can ask that. You can answer that after after we, we get off the thing. Anyway, any other things before we end? And then I'm going to just hold on. I want to ask you one more thing. Um, I can't think of any. Uh, the intellectual property thing is I just have the question, like I've asked on the group several times about, the patterns in general and blocks in general and what yeah. makes what qualifies as a block when you know in Europe there's a lot of old tiles and old things yeah and so it's difficult for me to be t- totally convinced that anything is new yeah and so I agree. When somebody says this is my block yeah and um it's hard for me because I've been to Alhambra and Malbork and all these old yeah. in Egypt and Luxor and and yeah. all these things, and it's just difficult for me to be convinced. And so I, I, so right. I have so fun. we're doing a project on that. So a couple of things. So 
first techniques are not protected so that helps us understand like techniques anything that like you how do you do something isn't protected instructions aren't protected because copyright protects the aesthetic part of it so then you think okay well is it more like a like if you think about choreography like a shuffle a shuffle isn't protected but the dance is so in terms of blocks, the question then is like, when is a block think, like more like a dance versus a shuffle? And it's a little bit complicated. So I think you're right. Most of the time blocks are, have been around forever and either they were never protected or they're long out of copyright. Um, maybe there's a brand new interesting block that somehow is protected. Sure. Now, the selection and arrangement and coordination of the works that you do, any of them, all of them, they all have copyright on them automatically, whether you're in Poland or in the United States. They, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, that Each of those quilts are protected by copyright. Now, are you going to enforce it? Then you have to do a whole bunch of stuff to enforce your copyright. But they, it arises automatically around the world. And it's protected around the world. And if you make it in Poland, it's protected here. And if you make it here, it's protected in Poland. There's only like five countries in the world where that's not true. Um, but then the question you're asking is when – really the question is when does it matter? When can I get in trouble? Um, and we saw there was a, a, a Sean Kimber. We interviewed her. She's a super famous quilter. Someone complained about her quilt. She just posted it today, I think about someone saying you're infringing on my quilt and she had taught them the class, right? So oh. this is all ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. Um, and the question really is when does it matter? And I think it matters if you're selling stuff. I think it matters if you um, feel like a big company has stolen your pattern. Um, but a lot of basic patterns are already are common. Um, so, you know, I... I'm really not the quilting police or the copyright police. I think what we're trying to understand is when does it matter? And I think people's feelings get hurt. That's when it matters. And when money's involved, and that's when it matters. Um, well, see, that's one thing I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to give was um, because I read a book or I listened to a book, audio book about where good ideas come from yeah. many years ago or a year or so ago. And he was talking, the guy talk, was talking about how somebody's going to steal your idea and they were really hyper about it and people, and he said, they will people. He was the one who guy came up with the idea of a bendy straw, for example, mm-hmm. or something like that. And he said, and you know what, within X number of months, the, another company was coming out with bendy straws. And he said, so do I go after that? No, I just come up with some more ideas. And because it's just not worth going after. And yeah. um, I've yeah. been listening to your your interviews. And yeah. it was interesting how actually when we're a little bit more free with our stuff, actually things blossom and right. flourish. Yeah, I mean, I and, think it, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's really, you have to make, it's like you're, you're, you're both are super business, business savvy. You got to decide what matters to you. And, and uh, it's very So I want to be part of a flourishing community, not yeah. one that's covered that grabs and, and, and corners the market and says, this is mine. You can't yeah. use it. Right. And I want to, I want us to grow. I want people to not be afraid to use patterns. I want them to <clears throat> not be afraid to copy. And yeah. I heard you ask someone before, uh, does it bother you if someone copies your quilt? I consider it a compliment. Yeah. I right. consider it the most, the biggest compliment Usually. if somebody were to say, right. I want to make one just like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, and I also think that's how you learn. Yeah. Um, I think if somebody were to say, I want to make that quilt, I'm going to see if I can do it just like that, but without using your pattern, you know, that doesn't bother me. Of course, I'm not selling it, but that doesn't bother me. And I don't think it would bother me if I were selling it because I know as when little kids, they learn by tracing, they learn by copying yeah. quilters. If we want to have more and more quilters. I mean, we can't think we're the end all. Right. I mean, there's going to be needs to be more designers, new designers, uh, younger designers, people who are going to always be designing, or yeah. we're going to die off in a, a generation. Yeah, yeah. So I think we should be encouraging people to copy our stuff, to not maybe illegal copy, but to to go ahead and learn and do it. I, yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's room for all of that, and I think that that's what's the beauty of the system, right? So your vi- vision of what patterns are are sharing and learning and that's really what matters to you. 
And right. then there's some people who feel like their whole world is about the economics of their pattern. Now, what I find is like, that's totally fine. And I, I do support them. Right. And I think that that's super great. I think that it's a losing battle in some instances because patterns can be copied so easily. I mean, it's, it's, I think I look to our other work with, say, the content owners, like the music industry, where, yes, <laughs> they are pursuing piracy and all of that. But where they're making their money is on the concerts, right? So wow. I, you know, that in, this is all intellectual property. It is very easy to steal. This is not, that's the problem. But what isn't mm-hmm. easy to steal is consumables or fabric or mm-hmm. other things. Like, like exactly what your business model is, right? You didn't just, you decided it's not worth it to, to have the, the, you love the, you, your love is through the, is, is the fabric and all these scrappy quilts and you make these patterns available for free but where you're making your money is on the fabric because the fabric is consumable and right. it's not it that's why you know and i see it over and like this this year like who's successful right now people that you have to buy their stuff over and over again uh the uh uh what is it called the mo the um Oh, I just was looking at her stuff already. What is her name? Oh, Maddie Rose Haynes. Well, she does the um, the interface where you have you do the bags, you know the um, the bags and different stuff. Like if stuff that you have to buy more of it to make it. Um, right. She's not depending on the pattern. Now I am totally pro pattern people, and I think it's great. It's just a long, hard road, right? It's ex- it's you don't get very much for it. And books are really great, right? Books are kind mm-hmm. of consumables too. Um, but pattern makers, that's what people you know. say make a book like and yeah. you should make a book well it's uh, writing a book is a big long I know, process I know I know I'm trying to think about whether I want to write write a book or not as well for the copyright <laughs> stuff I'm trying to figure out what to do with the copyright stuff um, although I, I just got asked I think I so um, I have to oh I have to get that contract back but um, QuiltCon just asked me to do two lectures and um, a, uh, a workshop at QuiltCon this year which is in February, which is so mm-hmm. awesome. Um, and so the question then is like, well, how do we prepare for that? Do we want a book? Do we want a pamphlet? Like, how do we, ex- and then for me, like if I taught you copyright the way I teach the law students, you would be so incredibly bored. Um, and also it's not really helpful. Like it's not really even helpful to them, right? So um, they take a next class that sort of applies all the work. So I'm trying to think through that now. Um, and again, it's all this thing of like how, you know, does it need to be locked up? Is it, is it, you know, do you monetize that or do you, you know, send it out for free or I don't know. There's just a lot, a lot to think about in this world. But I think you guys are doing everything right. I mean, in the sense of like you, you, you know what matters to you. You've got this great business model. You, you're putting out patterns there. Um, and you guys are just awesome. So thanks again for chatting and I really appreciate it. So this is Elizabeth Townsend Guard. You've been listening to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. We want to hear from you. Join our army, our quilting army. Go to our Facebook page. Suggest people to be interviewed. Suggest yourself to be interviewed. We are excited to hear from you. But most importantly, I hope you get a chance to quilt today. <laughs>